everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guy, your insider's guide to all things franchising in the local area. I'm Blake Martin, local small business franchise owner and your Heartland Franchise Guy. This is the place for advocacy, resources, and education on all things franchising in the local community, and a great place for any entrepreneur to stop by if they're just looking to learn more about the industry. Speaking of entrepreneurs, we've got somebody here today who actually helps to educate and rise up entrepreneurs through one of his volunteer roles. Levi Cernak from the local One Million Cups um, group, I'll call it. Yep. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Blake. I'm excited to be here. Well, we appreciate it. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, your business elevator, but first, before we, uh, before we confuse folks, let's talk a little bit about the entrepreneurial venture with One Million Cups. Awesome. Now, you are a local facilitator and have been for some time with One Million Cups. Why don't we start with the assumption that not everybody in our audience out Perfect. there knows what it is. What is One Million Cups all about? Awesome. Yeah, One Million Cups is a support group and a networking group that supports uh, startups and founders. And it's a platform for founders to share what they're doing, what their startup is up to, and then provide a networking place for everybody that's interested in the startup community. Um, it was founded and funded by the Kauffman Foundation in 2012. In Cleveland, right? Um, yeah, uh, I believe it's actually Kansas City. Okay, thanks. Might have been Kansas City, yep. And um, it exists to basically provide prosperity and mobility to people that want to shape their lives using entrepreneurship. Gotcha. So speaking of pushing through and struggling, I'll, I'll acknowledge, thank you, Levi, for joining us today. You're, you are pushing through a challenge with losing your voice, and I appreciate you still joining us Um He's not going to get anybody sick, just so our nope. audience knows. But uh, uh, again, practicing what you preach when it comes to uh, sometimes you just got to push through, even though you got a challenge. So appreciate yep. you. Uh, Happy to be here. Thanks. Walking through with us today. Yep. What, how do people? Well, let me ask first. Um, what? Where does One Million Cups meet, and how do people get involved? Great question. One Million Cups meets at the Ashton Building in Millwork mm -hmm. Commons. Um, Millwork Commons is a group of people that um, also supports innovation, entrepreneurship, and art, and all these cool things in the community. And it's at 8 a.m. every Wednesday morning. And stop by for a free cup of coffee and hear what's going on in your community. And speaking of in your community, obviously, One Million Cups has gone national. They're in a lot of major metropolitan yep. areas. And are, are they always, I know they're always mornings every week. Yep. Are they always on Wednesdays? Yep. You can find a One Million Cups basically in any large or medium-sized city. Um, there are over 200 chapters, and they always meet on Wednesdays at either 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Gotcha. Then what does it look like? So I walk into yep. my first One Million Cups at, at Millwork Commons next Wednesday. What should I expect? Yeah, great question. Um, so there are going to be a couple people mingling around, and people start trickling in. Trickling Maybe some in. coffee? Yep, trickling in around <laughs> 810, getting their first cups of coffee in. And we usually start the presentation around 820. Um, it's a really brief 6 to 10 minute presentation, kind of a snapshot of what's going on. We like to focus on Q&A, followed by 20 minutes of question and answering, and then networking and connecting after that. Um, it also seems to serve as a place for um, really busy and influential people to come and get some of their meetings set. And it's an opportunity to find that one person that you can't get a hold of throughout the week. Right. Um, and also just hear what's going on with these entrepreneurs and their super, super busy lives. They're taking a chunk out of their day, that yeah. precious time, and engaging with the community and how we can help them and how they can help our community. Speaking of how we can help them, you reminded me. I mean, when I've attended some of the One Million Cups around here, Sometimes it's a pitch, right? Somebody that yeah. is proposing something and thinking about doing something and wants feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Um, feedback is um, one of the reasons a lot of startups really enjoy going to One Million Cups. And we see um, a lot of startups and founders go from city to city to keep presenting to get some of those great ideas. Oh, really? Yep. That's smart. Yeah. What's, I mean, obviously there's one in Kansas City, probably more than one in Kansas yeah. City. Are there other ones? So we're recording here in Omaha. Yep. Are there other ones nearby us? Yeah, Lincoln has one. Okay. And um, like you mentioned, Kansas City and any of the larger metropolitan areas around in the Midwest are bound to have some. Gotcha. Do we have one in Des Moines? Um, I, th I'm, I do believe so, yes. Um, Des Moines has a really strong chapter led by Ben McDougall. Wow, good memory. I'm impressed. Yeah. How, how long have you been at this? Um, about four, three, four years now. And how did you get involved? Um, yeah, so I had a job um, supporting the Entrepreneurship Center at the University of Nebraska at Omaha mm -hmm. and just, you know, networking, getting plugged into the community, um, saw that this was serving a real need and something I wanted to be a part of and um, met Taylor Kerensky and Jay Jensen with Apsky 
Yeah. And they invited me to be a part of the organizing team. And that's how I got involved. And here we are a few years later. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're recording on the transition of a year, right? We're in December. Yep. What should we expect for 1 million cups in 2023? Yeah, globally? great question. Um, you know, just more of the same, but bigger and better. Um, so we hope to spread our audience or increase our audience and really kind of capture people that are interested in what's going on mm -hmm. that haven't yet found us. And so we're doing some things to amplify our voice and our marketing on social media and our presence there. And then also just really finding some of those startups um, that might be right outside of the Omaha community and not just focusing on Omaha, but showcasing this as a platform for Nebraska entrepreneurs. Gotcha. And what does it cost to be involved in One Million Cups? It is free. Thanks to the Kaufman Foundation. And yes. probably are there local supporters as well, I assume? Yes. So we have a number of sponsors, including um, the Greater Omaha Chamber, the Miller Commons, Peak, mm -hmm. Chapman & Company, Apsky, the Maverick Venture Fund, Elevator, and a number of others I'm not thinking of on the spot. <laughs> That's okay. It, this is not a test. Don't worry. Thank you. So I would imagine that in those other markets, there's probably some local sponsors that are helping out as well. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great way for um, people that want to get their name out there and support their own community. And really, it all it, all it takes is 100 to $500 to help supply some of the coffee and some of the special events. Um, oh. Nobody's paid. It's an entirely volunteer-run organization. And the Kauffman Foundation provides some of the swag that we're able to give to the speakers and to make some of those events nice. Yeah. So if you're an organization, decision maker in an organization that um, that wants to interact with entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs um, and you're looking at, again, we're recording in December and you're looking right. for some tax deductible there we donations, go. right? So some charitable contributions, uh, perhaps yes. One Million Cups is a place you could look. Omaha1mc at gmail.com. And thanks for that clarification. Yeah, so you want to look for the number one MC or yes. number one million cups. That's how you're going to find one yep, million exactly. cups. Facebook page, all social media. Um, I imagine if you Google it, you'll find it too, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're pretty active on LinkedIn. Yes, I've noticed that, which is great. Makes a lot of sense for aspiring entrepreneurs. I will put you on the spot a little bit. So one of the things I've noticed in the local one million cups when I've attended is the quality of the questions and it seems that when somebody's coming in and they're testing out an idea or they want to get some additional feedback on something that they just got going, mm -hmm. the quality of what I'll call tough, inquisitive questions really seems to be way up there. And maybe that's because others who are in the audience have been through the same thing or are thinking about the same thing. Oh, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, a lot of those tough questions um, I know come from founders that are struggling to answer the questions they're asking. And so they're struggling with some of those, how did it get past this hump um, in my business model? Or I have no idea what to do. So they're, they're putting those questions out there to see how other people are talking about them. Yeah. And then we also just have um, a really curious and inquisitive crowd that is very, very interested in what's going on. How does it work? And they just want to be a part of the startup community um, without being an entrepreneur, which I think is great. Yeah. We need a lot of support organizations and people supporting founders and entrepreneurs. This is way more than people showing up for free coffee. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that has been my experience for sure. Um, you talked about, you know, founders. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, profiling the person that should really be investing the time on some Wednesdays or every Wednesday if they can. And it sounds like, you know, if you're an entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur that feels a little bit like you're on an island. So, you know, again, we don't just talk about franchising here. One of the benefit. I'm a local small business franchise owner. I never feel like I'm on an island because I got all these peers that I'm constantly collaborating with, but that's not always the case. So if you're that person that feels kind of like you're on an island and you need another voice, One Million Cups might be a good spot to interact with Absolutely. people who are in the exact same situation. Absolutely. Um, and we do see that. We do have a couple of franchise folks there that attend regularly. Um, I know one person has a, is an owner of a, a t-shirt franchise. And it, again, it's just a great way to create community, to engage with people that are pursuing similar dreams and similar goals in their own life and really kind of create that network of peers, especially if you are working from home, you're virtual and you don't have that through your workplace. Yeah. And this is industry agnostic. This is Absolutely. not just tech or, I mean, this is all, yep. you said there's t-shirt folks There's mm -hmm. probably people that, well, I know there's people that, you know, they've got a new app or tech, yep. AppSkeet's involved as a yeah. sponsor. So why not? Um, but we're talking about all different industries. Exactly. Um, there is a there is a, a typical founder that makes a great presentation, and we do try to focus on scalable, high growth startups. Um, we make um, wait, say that again. Scalable, 
high growth high start, growth startups. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought you said hydro. Again, oh, no. it's your voice. You're powering through on a day. You're losing your startups, voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, we've heard a variety of speakers before. Gotcha. So speaking of a variety of businesses, what is this t-shirt all about? Yeah. So Elevator is the company that I work at. I'm the uh -huh. proud first employee. Um, Elevator yes. is a co-warehousing model that helps um, small businesses with physical goods. with their shipping, they're selling, and we provide um, a lower barrier of entry for those entrepreneurs to get out of their house. Tell me more about that. How do you provide a lower barrier to entry to those yeah. entrepreneurs? Um, so we offer micro warehousing and office space, okay, as well as logistics and fulfillment services all on a month to month basis. So previously, let's say you're an entrepreneur or an e-commerce seller in your house, you're growing, yeah. your living room's filled up with boxes, your garage is getting taken <laughs> over. I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> the spouses aren't very happy. Um, you go to look at a warehouse, you, it's really hard to find anything under 2,500, 5,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you're gonna have to sign a three to five year lease typically. And so we're really lowering that barrier of entry for those um, that need that in between. There's a gap in the market and that's what Elevator is fulfilling right now. I got about five people you need to talk to. <laughs> I would love to follow <laughs> great, up with those. Great Please. elevator pitch. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I've been waiting to say that this whole podcast. Great elevator pitch. I've definitely not used that one before. <laughs> well, you're welcome. I might collect a royalty on that. <laughs> so it is, it's a kind of a co-working space for businesses that have an industrial, light industrial need. Yeah, I would, we, we um, use the term co-warehousing because everybody gets their own private gotcha. warehouse space. But some of those office amenities and warehouse amenities like equipment, uh -huh. fulfillment services, industrial scales, those are all provided in as part of your membership. Okay. As well as the internet, the security cameras, the reception duties, um, a really nice place to be. We've invested in being in a cool place, so old market, and making a cool building. And so we've, um, we're working with Hutch Furniture. It's a great lobby, and we're nice. really proud of the building and the community that is growing out of that. Sounds like we need to record a podcast from there. Ooh, we would love that. <laughs> yes, you should absolutely come by. That sounds fantastic. And how new is Elevator? Uh, great question. We opened on October 1st. Um, we are um, chugging along right here into the end of 2022, and nothing but blue skies ahead of us. Congratulations. Thank you. No competition yet? Uh, there are a few competitors out there on the coasts, um, but we are not too far behind. They had a head start about a year and a half, um, but we're chasing them down. You're a trailblazer around here yes. in the Midwest. Yep, first one's in the Midwest. Fantastic. What's the reception been? What's the response been? Yeah, we've been... So it's, we've been really surprised and impressed by the eclectic types of businesses that are coming to us. Mm -hmm. um, we anticipated it being really kind of that focused e-commerce entrepreneur out of their house, yeah. which we are serving and we're getting a lot of those businesses, but we have engineering consulting firms. Um, we have people that are making custom high-end stuffed pillows and stuffed pets. So like all these very um, just really cool business models we would never anticipated are showing up. And we're also serving that that core e-commerce entrepreneur. Right, right. Well, you knew I was going to throw this question at you because this is the Heartland Franchise Guy podcast. Are you thinking maybe one day you'll replicate this? You might franchise the model? So, yes, we're thinking of replicating. Uh, franchising is not off the table by any means. Um, one of the things Very that Very diplomatic response, by the yes, way. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, we are, we're over, a lot of the activities that we're doing at headquarters and with the leadership team very much mirror that of a franchisor. Yeah. And so we're creating those standard operating playbooks. We're determining, you know, what's the framework to make decisions as we go select new cities and new sites. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of overlap between what a franchisor is doing and what we're doing. I would agree based upon what you just said. Now, here's a really, what sounds like a very granular question, but for anybody whose mind is on this, when they listen to this podcast, it's going to make a lot of sense. Could you give any tips? You've done something really smart. Sounds like you guys are already really paying close attention to and maybe even creating a repository for how do we repeat this, right? Right. Whether it's a franchise or not someday. Can you give any tips to founders or decision makers who are growing businesses and thinking that they're going to scale it and maybe use a model like franchising or licensing? Tips for how to make sure the easy thing to do is keep something in your head. Right. Right. And then when you have to try to teach it to somebody else, it's in your head. Right. And you know, we've all read books like the E-Myth, et cetera. Right. Or traction. How do you, how does your team 
document or pay attention to what's going to need to be replicated? Could you just kind of give a real life example of yeah. how you guys walk Yeah, great that? question. Um, so we're going through, and so let me answer your first question. What should we be thinking about? Yeah. Um, think about every activity at scale. Um, does it involve human processes? Does it involve making decisions on the spot? Anything you can do to reduce the amount of human hands touching something or the amount of decision making in the moment that is needed is something that should be documented and um, turned into a rule, essentially. Mm-hmm. And how we're documenting that and creating it is uh, we're just referring it, referring to it as the elevator playbook. And the playbook contains a list of all of our core processes. Um, so far, I think we're up to about 75 or 100 um, specific processes. Each has mm-hmm. a couple pages on it. And then really, really distilling it down into easy-to-read action steps and then pairing that with resources like videos, training programs, and um, just thinking about a person with no uh, familiarity with this concept. How can they pick this up and make it go? You're talking like a franchisor. No, I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, the, just the thought that you're putting into that. And, of course, now when you do this documentation and processing, you never miss a single thing, and it always goes perfectly well. Right? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm sure our co-founders would say that. <laughs> no, um, no, it's it's a truthfully it is a messy process. We are figuring out as a team like who's responsible for what, how does this get written? Mm-hmm. So we've got all these progress trackers, we've got all these different um, all these different pages everybody's responsible for, and then we have to set aside specific um, time for all of our team to get together and do that. Because in the hustle and bustle of doing the thing you're trying to write a playbook for, it's just really it's really it's really hard to get it all done, right? So you got to set aside time to do that. Yeah, and we've already rewritten the same thing several, several times. So there's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> You're in good this. company there. Yeah. yeah. The point being, you know what, you can't, you can't not do it just because it's not going to be right. perfect. Right. right. You know, exactly. You're going to learn as you go. Direction over perfection. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah. Maybe you should go into one liners full time. <laughs> Rainyquotes.com. Oh, that'd be, that's too much. <laughs> as you were talking there and kind of walking through your experience, it, it occurs to me that going back to the original discussion point on 1 million cups, I'm guessing 1 million cups may have had a lot to do with you feeling prepared to jump into this role, which leads me back to, you know, a, um, a tangential value of the 1 million cups program. Yeah. Um, that's a really good point. I think that you just kind of absorb a lot of the lessons after listening to, um, founders talk about their problems, their challenges and their successes. And you're able to identify some of those common themes, some of those, um, foundational elements of what makes a successful startup business model f- mm-hmm. franchising model. And so I think I've just kind of absorbed that without even knowing it at a lot of different stages. And it's one of those things where you look back and you're like, wow, okay, I've, I've, I've learned quite a bit here yeah. in the last few years. Yeah. And Didn't feel like I was learning anything, but all of right. a sudden I'm a lot more smarter. Or- <laughs> <laughs> well said. Maybe you should uh, be in charge of the one-liners. Um, and then I'd also say really leveraging the opportunity at, at One Million Cups and events like it, where you have the opportunity to meet folks like you, folks like co-founders or founders and people in startups, set meetings with them, grab coffee, develop relationships. And that's that's been so valuable um, for me from a learning perspective, from a networking perspective, and it just fills my cup in life. Nice. Well done. So, Levi, I want to thank you for being here. But before we wrap up, give me two chunks of contact info. One, again, how do people get engaged with One Million Cups? How do they Mm -hmm. find their One Million Cups as closest to them? And then secondly, how do people get a hold of Elevator? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, um, you can reach the One Million Cups team at omaha1mc at gmail.com. And then you can reach me personally at Levi, L-E-V-I, at elevatorspaces.com. Okay. Or hello at elevatorspaces.com. We would love to hear from you. Perfect. And the people, anybody who's interested in entrepreneurship is the target for One Million Cups. And for Elevator, it's any decision maker, business owner, founder who's looking for some kind of warehousing um, and wants a solution that's different from the norm that's out there. Yep. If you ship and sell goods, you're having a problem with labor, we can help you out. Fantastic. Now, everybody, all of our audience knows as we wrap up here, you don't have to have memorized all of that contact info because you can scan the QR code that's on your screen and get in touch with us, and we'll make sure that you get in touch with folks like Levi and their businesses. So I pre- first, let me say thank you for being such a big part of making One Million Cups happen in the Omaha area. Appreciate that very much. It's been a value to me personally. Thanks so. for attending and being a supporter, Blake. We really you appreciate bet. what you're doing here and what you do in the community for everybody else. You're very welcome. 
And thanks for all of you attending and being a part of this podcast today and listening to Levi. Remember, you can use that QR code if you want to uh, know more about anything you heard today. And also remember, don't keep us a secret. Don't keep us in the elevator. Open those elevator doors. Tell the world. Subscribe, follow, and share, particularly if you have folks who you think would be interested in One Million Cups uh, or Elevator. And needless to say, go into our archives. You're going to find us on all the major podcasts. Thank you all for being with us on another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guide. We'll see you here again soon. Mm-hmm.